What do you do when basil goes to flower? Well, you've got a few options. The first one is, is to leave the plant. Let it go through its cycle, create seed, collect the seed and plant them next year. Or what I like to do is pinch all the flowers out. The plant looks a little bit poorly after that, but with a liquid feed and continuous watering, it'll put on new flushes of growth, meaning more food. But beware, it will continue to produce flowers, so you need to pinch these out as you see them. Why is it a good idea to clean your boots when moving from the bush to the garden? Well, one very good reason is Phytophthora. Phytophthora is a water mould that attacks the roots of many native and ornamental plant species. It stops the roots from taking out water and nutrient. It lives in the soil and plant material and can survive for quite a while on your boots. So scrub away before you're moving between the bush and a garden. How do I store saved seed? Well, truth is, permafrost right next to your woolly mammoth. But if you can't achieve that at home, I've got a few other tips. The key thing you need to do is ensure that seed are kept dry and that they're kept cool. So a simple way to do that is once they've dried right out is you put them into a jar. And I sometimes put a little bit of rice down the bottom, which will help to sort of desiccate the environment and keep them nice and dry. Let's pop some seed packets in there. And then that can go into a cool, dark place. Some people will even keep them in the fridge. So if you store your seed nice and cool, nice and dry, you should get the best life out of them. Why are my sunflower heads sprouting? Now, it's not happening here, but it is quite common. It's called vivipri. It's when a hormone in the plant that's responsible for the dormancy of seed, called abscisic acid, gets too low, and the seeds start to germinate on the plant. Now, it looks quite freaky, but as I said, it is quite common to plants like strawberries, tomatoes, mangroves, and of course, sunflowers. When's the right time to pick and eat your chilli? Well, there's no hard and fast rule because chilies come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and colours and heat. Usually, if you see a green chilli, that will be milder than a hot red one, but that's not always the case. The thing that makes them hot is the capsicum. It's a chemical inside the chilli. It's not the seeds that are hot, it's the capsicum inside that's found on the membrane. It's that part there that is the really hot one. So you always wash your hands after touching that. So it really depends on how you like your chilli. Some are really pleasantly warm, others are absolutely eye-bulgingly hot. It's really up to you. Why do herbs smell nice? Well, they smell nice because they produce a compound commonly known as essential oils. By definition, a herb is a plant that doesn't form a woody stem, so it's vulnerable to getting eaten. What we think of as a nice smelling plant is actually its defense, protecting it from herbivores, fungi, and bacteria. If you're a lavender grower, don't forget to do this. Lots of people look at their lavender and they wait till it finishes flowering and then they let it go too long. And the flowers just turn into these sort of brown, tatty looking things at the top. You should, as soon as the lavender finishes flowering, trim it back. And it's easy to do. Get your secateurs and just look down the stem and cut so that you get two leaves like that. That's all you need to do. You've got the brown, old, finished flower, two little leaves like that, and then that makes a wonderful fire lighter. Absolutely terrific. And if you want to not do it quite so meticulously with your secateurs, get your hedge trimmers or loppers and just go chop, chop, chop. So, doesn't that look so much better it means that the bush is much more compact and it's less likely to fall apart in the middle. You'll end up with a long-lived lavender. What can you grow on a hot tin fence? Well, it's a really, really common question and there are lots of solutions. Plenty of climbing plants will thrive in these conditions, but I wanted something that was evergreen, 
fast and dense. So what I've chosen to do is actually Espalier a rosemary. This is a very vigorous and upright form that I took cuttings of from a rental garden years ago and it's rocketing away. It's only about 18 months in this spot and already I'm about half a metre up. As it grows, I just sort of push the new stems behind the Rio and then I can clip anything that's coming off on the front. In winter, it'd be absolutely full of beautiful blue flowers. It's a really easy and good solution. The perfect conditions that I've created for these seeds, well, they're also perfect for all the soil organisms, the worms and all of those things that make soil live which of course birds love to scratch at. And I found that they'll get straight in there and they'll make an absolute mess of my seed sowing. So this has become one of my stalwarts in the garden. It's just a dog bed. Once the hessian or the shade cloth rots out, people tend to chuck them out onto the verge when I pick them up. Just put a bit of chicken wire over the top and it makes a really spacious little cover for those seedlings to get going without getting scratched. I'm making herb salt, and it's a great way to give extra flavour to your cooking. Things like casserole stews, even a roast chook. And it makes the life of your herbs go that extra distance. You can use almost any sort of herb. Coriander, thyme, this is dill and salt. That's a beauty. Or you can use a combination of things, parsley, mint, sage, whatever you've got in the garden. And salt. It has to be coarse, not the fine table salt. To make it, chop up some herbs, in this case I'm using sage, and just do it roughly. You could use a food processor, but make sure it doesn't end up like a paste or puree. Just a knife is fine. Put the sage into a bowl, half a cup of salt, and combine it well so it's a uniform mixture. Put it in the fridge for a week so that the flavours meld together. It will live in the fridge for up to six months, but give it a shake every now and again. And because it's salt, salt's a great preservative, but there's a lot of it, so just use it sparingly. It does make a great gift, and it just adds that extra kick in your cooking. <laughs>